Voice of the Cape Drive Time, welcome back to the show. It's a Friday, and on Friday we do books. And today in my hand I have a production of Witz University Press, but it's all to do about the Cape. The title of the book is The Cape Radicals, Intellectual and Political Thought of the New Era Fellowship, 1930s to the 1960s. The author is uh, Crane Saudin, who uh, for many years was a well-known educationist, uh, he is now um, Chief Executive Officer of the Human Sciences Research Council and an honorary professor at the Nelson Mandela University. Also authored Realizing the Dream, Unlearning the Logic of Race in the South African School. That was in 2012. But today we're talking about the Cape Radicals. And uh, if you were at school during the 60s and 70s, some of the people we're going to be mentioning, even the 80s, are going to certainly jolt your memories. But, uh, Crane Saudin, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much for having me, Shabik. Now, this is interesting because this book focuses on a group called the New Era Fellowship. And from this grouping came so many other groupings and a stream of thought which I think has been completely neglected and forgotten. Your, your views on that? So this is part of the reason why this book uh, was produced. It was produced for the 80th anniversary of the uh, birth of the New Era Fellowship. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was an attempt on the part of uh, the people who asked me, and there were people from the New Unity Movement, and an attempt to try and put uh, this story uh, into place uh, in a way which uh, is usable. So it's never been... Um, brought together in the way in which uh, I have uh, attempted here. It's the story has been available in scattered places mm -hmm. in people's memories. You know, so so this is r really a, a a a part of an attempt to help us uh, put the uh, bigger and the more complex picture of what Cape Town is all about into place. And, of course, uh, what is so interesting about this, and we said off-air previously that everybody's been brought up on the idea of the Congress narrative. I'm going to call it that. Yeah. Whereas the Cape Radicals, the New Era Fellowship leading to, to, to other movements, were actually driving intellectual and political thought yes. quite profoundly. Um, it was not a huge group, but, boy, they certainly managed to affect a lot of minds, didn't they? Yes, so... Particularly in the nineteen uh, forties, uh, late nineteen thirties, um, and even into the beginning of the nineteen fifties, um, this group would would have had a political uh, weight and, uh, and and presence that would not have been so different in some ways uh, to that of the ANC. The ANC goes through a lot of difficulty during that time. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, the country had many options, strange as it may seem, in front of it uh, during the 1940s. Um, and one can begin a discussion about what the circumstances of history were which allow the ANC to become dominant, and not this, this other tradition. Mm -hmm. It could easily have been the other way around had people made mm -hmm. you know, other, other choices. But this tradition is... is a, a probably a more difficult tradition to uh, seed into the public imagination than, than say, the ANC tradition. Um, uh, and there are lots of uh, reasons that one can talk about, you know, how come this tradition is, is such a neglected one. Uh, but, but a lot of it has to do with, 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 with a challenge that they constitute to thinking about, about who one is in the uh, South African context. And I'd be very happy for us to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and in fact, I, I think we need to because their take on the whole racial issue, yes. for example, um, thought-provoking, um, their take on, on economics and social justice. Um, and tell us more about, also mention some of the personalities and then sort of flesh out, you know, sort of their vision, as it were. Yeah, so, so the major <coughs> personalities are, are, are people who have slipped out of our memories um, two of them are, are particularly uh, crucial as as Cape Townians. There's a third one, Tabata, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's Gulam Gul, uh, Benny Kiss, and, and Isaac Tabata. Mm -hmm. and, and these three people are, are, are absolutely, you know, 
formidable intellectual giants. Gulam Gul is, is an extraordinary person about whom we still have to uh, do a whole lot more digging and writing. I mean, it, it, it in some ways begins with, 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 with Gulam Gul. Mm -hmm. He was a doctor married you know, into the uh, Abdul Rahman uh, family, uh, studied in the UK, became a doctor in the UK, and comes here as a very young uh, person, mm. is 29 uh, in 1932, 1933. Um, and in a few years, three years, he takes on this responsibility of beginning this new intellectual, if you like, revolution uh, in, in South Africa. And, and there he is, this, this young, dashing, debonair doctor. And he's joined in no time by Ben Kiss, who himself is a recent graduate from UCT. He's, he himself is in his early 20s. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and these two people are joined uh, by a third person, Tabata. Tabata doesn't have the education. He, he, he was at, uh, at Fort Hare, uh, comes to Cape Town as a member of the Lorry uh, Drivers uh, Union. Um, and, um, but he's exceptional as an, as a, as an intellectual. Mm -hmm. And these three people begin to give and produce for us and for the country this idea of non-racialism. Uh, and it's and it's an entirely new creation which comes out of uh, their interaction, their debates, uh, their engagements uh, with each other. I must say to people because you know the stuff doesn't just jump out out of the blue; mm. it does have roots. Absolutely, yeah. uh, and and those roots are, are uh, you know, and for us as South Africans, it's important for us to understand those roots. Those roots begin with Olive Schreiner. Uh, and it's an extraordinary story also to... to Her story to of an African farm is yes. a very yeah. misunderstood yeah. Uh, um, piece of work, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but it's also uh, very much shaped by these Jewish political exiles who arrive here in the Cape who are victims of the pogroms mm. uh, in, in Middle Europe. Uh, a lot of them are socialists. And they come here and they meet these young people, um, Gulam Gul, Kiss... Uh, and Tabata, uh, and with them they begin this conversation about what it means to be a new human being. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and it's a conversation which has to deal, of course, with, with Jewishness, but quickly comes to have to deal with what it means to be oppressed mm. uh, in, in, in the South African co uh, context. Uh, and very quickly, uh, within a period of 10 years, this conversation evolves and, and within a period of 10 years, it gets to the point where these people are able to say in an astonishing way uh, that they can see how ideology comes to produce subservience, subjection, uh, inferiority in people, and they reject it. Yeah. In fact, in many senses, when reading the book and what you've said, it sounds strange to say it, but they were ahead of their time in a sense because the realizations that, that people came to about apartheid, um, that, that uh, pe people only started to wake up, I think, in the 60s after Sharpeville in a sense, but these guys were onto it from day one in a sense. Well, not quite day one. Well, almost, 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 almost day one, yeah. Well, very close. To, in 1939, they begin already saying that this thing of race is nonsense. I mean, mm -hmm, they begin, mm -hmm. begin mm -hmm. to say that. They don't shape it theoretically until about the, 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 the middle 1940s. But the point that you're making is really important for us as South Africans to grab a hold of here. Mm. And that point is that they're not only ahead of the rest of South Africa, they're ahead of the rest of the world. I got goosebumps when I saw that because sometimes I think in South Africa we are not given credit for that. People seem to think because you're from Africa we can't think. Um, yet some of the deepest thinkers have come from Africa. Uh, some very good, excellent academics, um, but they don't get the recognition. But yes, indeed, I mean, and this is a Cape thing as well, isn't it? And w when, when you read the discourse, you realize, but hang on a minute, I don't get the equivalence of this in European literature, in American literature, and even in South American literature, that the discourse seems to be way ahead of its time. It's wonderful. Uh, descendants are still very much uh, amongst us. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but uh, they had made the decision consciously 
to send their people into schools. It was it was a, a deliberate decision. Mm, mm. And it's partly also because, you know, many of them, including my father-in-law, uh, um, um, and, and my father-in-law was at the University of Cape Town in 19, up until 1942. Uh, and I you know, make the point in the book there that he was, he was the class medalist for geography, mm -hmm. right? But these people never got the opportunity to be able to even can contemplate the possibility of being able to further their their careers. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to schools, and they're going to schools, and they're these absolutely towering intellectuals, teaching Latin, maths, English, uh, in ways which uh, would have been only a privilege. I talked to Harold Chrissy, and I will say to people uh, that the period that I had been there before and afterwards, uh, the school was an underprivileged school, it was under-resourced, but in my view, uh, what we had in the school with the uh, teachers around mm -hmm. me uh, was good enough to uh, 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 rival anything in the country. Uh, well, if, if you look at the, the, the people that came out of Livingston, uh, Trafalgar and Harold Cressy, I apologize to the other schools because other schools were involved as well, and where some of these people are even today, or where they've got to, it's quite mind-boggling to think that some of them have become national leaders, doctors, lawyers, sort of bastions of society from that environment where they were never, ever supposed to be in the positions where they are today because of apartheid. Yes, and it tells you something about how, how hardship works. Mm. I mean, I don't talk about this in this, in this book, you know, but, but hardship also produces in people the sense of, I will show you I can be better than mm -hmm. you think mm -hmm. I am. And this is what these people t teach their children, you know, that you have it in you to be the very best that there is. Uh, and coming out of these schools are, now has been the case for the last 50 years, uh, the cream, if you like, of, of the medical profession, the legal profession, uh, t teachers, uh, and it's, and it's, of course, it, it has it produces social difficulties. You have snobbery and elitism, which mm -hmm. come out of out of out of all of this. But sitting behind it is this this absolutely incredible commitment uh, to not accepting inferiority. This drive. In in fact, you do mention in the book that there there, there have been times when um, the New Era Fellowship and the offshoots New Unity Movement members have been regarded as being aloof. But one thing in my personal capacity of meeting some of these people, um, some of them very late in their lives, they were not apologetic for whom they were and what they stood for. And I think one thing I can admire about them is that they stood for their principles yeah. and they were not apologetic about it. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 uh, but they were also uh, principles that were underpinned, if you like, by great learning and not just book learning. I mean, you know, learning uh, which produces understanding, which mm -hmm, produces mm -hmm. analysis, you know, which produces this capacity for giving a sense of how you might bring up your children, you know, how you might relate to people on the street, you know, what your obligation is to people in your, your you know, community, you know, how you bear yourself, you know, and so, so, so it, it, it comes across as aloofness, uh, uh, at at some points, and you might want to counterpoise that to just what apartheid uh, achieves and and yes. succeeds in doing yes. to many people. Mm. You know, so so this this kind of, uh, of, of 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 subservience, this 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 um, s lack of self regard that you have in very many people. This is the opposite of that. No, I mean none of them. That you know, and again, I'm I'm sort of. I hope, sorry to personalize it, the only way I can understand it is that none of these people I met were ever apologetic for whom they were, and some of them stood head and shoulders above everybody else because they were not embarrassed about their identity, and they were not um, shy about their thoughts either. They were quite welcome to share them. And the other nice thing was they were always keen to discuss things. They would listen to you and then destroy your argument. Yes. Or mine, definitely. Yeah. But, I mean, it was, it's part of the learning experience. Yeah. They were very, very sharp. When it came to being uh, yeah. for for discourse, yeah. yeah. So they were taught how to debate. Mm. You know, they were taught how to argue. So a lot of this book is about uh, the uh, t 
mentoring, the tutoring which which happened in these fellowships. So you went to a fellowship, mm. um, and you didn't go there simply as a as a member. You were required to take responsibility. Mm. You were required to read. You know, you were required to come there and have a a prepared, uh, if you like, engagement with 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 what the issues are. Uh, and so, the important thing to say about all of this, Shafiq, is that you you have the emergence of a university level mind. Yeah. Yes. Mm. You know, coming out of coming coming out of out of out of all of this, and it's and. Uh, this is Cape Town. It happens in small ways also, in places you know like Port Elizabeth, a little bit in Johannesburg, um, Kimberley. Uh, uh, Paul is a, a, a centre also of 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 uh, this kind of intellectual you know development and uh, the whole Paul, if you like, intellectual uh, tra- tradition rests on this on 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 this experience. Mm. No, I mean, it's, it's really interesting, and it's sad in a sense, isn't it, that these people haven't been given the recognition that I certainly think they deserve, because if you sit back and you think if they hadn't have been around, where would some of us be today? We probably wouldn't be sitting here even in the studio today if it hadn't been for their vision, because one thing that, that you mentioned as well is that they, they looked at a rounded personality, because they also emphasized you've got to be physically fit, you must indulge in sports, so it was the whole package. It wasn't just a whole mind thing. It was everything. Yes, and so um, that sense of education in its very best sense is, I think, what we're talking about uh, Yeah, You know, that you never stop learning. You know, that mm-hmm. your, your, your obligation as a human being is, is to be very aware that, that there is a lot more for you to know every single day. You know that your 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 life requires you to confront the reality that the things you don't understand. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and to make it a kind of life's obligation uh, to to respond to this. You know, so 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 books are a big thing. You know, in this in this in this environment um, and in in this community. And of course, it does give that. Aura of 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 uh, of snobbishness. I've used that word before. You, mm-hmm. you know. Yes, um, but it's not meant that way no, at not, all. Not it's not meant. To, and we we have to try now in our lives today to help because you still have in the townships young children hiding books away when they go home in the afternoon. They don't like being seen to be carrying books. They rather have earphones in their heads. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, and so, so the, the 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 loss of what all of this—not the loss—I don't. It's not lost, but it, it's 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 simply relegated, you know, in terms of of, of, of importance. Of importance, um, you know, that that relegation is something that I that I, I mean, that partly, you know, what I have felt as a as a personal mission, you know, to uh, be thinking about what this book is all about. Karen Sardin, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Um, I think we could have carried on discussing until the sun uh, uh, sets and rises again. But we've been talking about a book. It's entitled The Cape Radicals, Intellectual and Political Thought of the New Era Fellowship. And, of course, this fellowship led to movements such as a new unity movement, too many to mention. And um, a group of people and sort of a thought process well ahead of its paradigm, I'll put it that way, and these people... They need to be recognized, and uh, Crane Sardin has done it. The book, published by uh, Wits University Press, and I'm sure it's available at a bookshop uh, near us, basically. Well, it's available at, ex- it, at exclusives. Um, um, Clark's Bookstore uh, has one, and uh, um, the Book Lounge is co-hosting this with us um, at the District 6 Museum tomorrow. Right, uh, tell us about the event tomorrow. Let, let's get commercial. You have, you have to, okay. have, the, book, the book has to sell, so tell us yeah. more about it. Uh. So at 11, for 11.30 tomorrow, um, uh, we have a, uh, an event where I'm going to be talking um, to the importance of this, uh, uh, this contribution. The, book, the event will be um, um, managed by my colleague Sean uh, Villun, who's written on Richard Reeve, by the way, who's okay, another right, yes. product of, mm-hmm. of, of all of this. And so um, uh, there are going to be lots of people. I know that. Mm, um, that's good. That's good. Um, yes. The RSVP list already has a hundred people. 
you know, um, so uh, we are going to have, I think, a pretty lively... And this uh, is taking place at the Book Lounge in town? No, it's taking place at the, dis- at the Homecoming so Centre of the District, District 6, 6 Museum. Museum. Yeah. Right, District 6 Museum, 11 yeah. for 11.30. Yeah. Crens, good luck with tomorrow and good luck with the sales of the book. And um, this uh, message needs to be shouted over the rooftops that in the Cape we have so many things to be proud of. But well done and thanks for chatting to us. No, thank you very much. Thanks very much.